this tutorial will follow the outline I am showing right now. I will first give a brief description of the random forest technique. And then I also state the pieces requirements you need to satisfy in order for you to follow this tutorial. Then we move to the practical session where we implement a random forest classifier in Python. We start that by first creating a synthetic data set. Then we create the random forest classifier. We then feed the data set we created to the classifier. And finally, we evaluate the model we've built. Now, when we talk about random forests, they are machine learning methods that are used for solving classification and regression problems. A random forest is an ensemble method that uses several decision trees for making predictions. And it also has the ability to handle data sets with large numbers of features. And it's also able to calculate the importance of the features. Now, in order for you to follow this tutorial and reproduce it, you need to make sure you have an internet browser. And you also need to have an internet connection. These are the only requirements you need. No additional software is required. So once you have these requirements met, you can start the activity. We are going to use an online platform to do this. So join me and let's do this. So the first thing we have to do is to go to Google Colab. So what we are going to do is to run all the Python codes online. You don't need to install anything locally. So this is the page we are going to use and I'm going to leave this link in the description box. So let's reset the page. That's the Google Colab. It's a very cool system Google has built. So let me just um, come here first. So we are going to run a new notebook. So go to File and then go to New Notebook. Please note that with the Google Colab, you need to have a Google account before you can use it. If you want to use your own Python machine, that's also fine. So let's use this one. Okay, so we have our notebook opened for us. And let me also say that if you want to run your own Python codes, then you need to install the scikit-learn package. That is, it. that is if you want to run your Python codes locally. But on the Google Colab, everything is installed for you, so you don't have to worry about installing any library package. So the first thing we have to do is to import our libraries so let's import them. So we see from SKLearn dot datasets import make classification. We are going to use this to generate our own datasets for classification. So that's why we import this. And then from SKLearn dot model selection imports train tests let me zoom in splits we are going to use this to split the data we generate from here into train and test sets then from sklearn dot ensemble imports Random forest classifier. There's a random forest classifier that we are going to use. Then from SKLearn dot metrics imports accuracy score. We are going to use this to find the accuracy for the classifier that we built here. So that's what we are going to do. Then we run it, so we run it using this button here. So let's run it. Let me just issue the statement here first. So that we can track and make sure everything is working 
fine okay so we have imported all the libraries we need so let's add a new code here so we are going to first generate the data sets so we see make let's say x y equals make classification then we place in our parameters so first of all n samples that's the number of samples so let's make it thousand and then we say n features let's say 20 and then n informative that's the number of informative features let's just say 15. so we have some default parameters here uh, that you can also use as well so that means that if you don't enter anything these are the default parameters that will be used so let's add something else to it and classes by default it's two and then let's leave all other settings as they are so let's run this so we have it done if everything is successful you have this green tick shown here for you so let's add a new code here so we are now going to split the data into train and test sets so we see x train s test y train y test equals train test split and we give what the x and y values we say test size equals 0 0.2 that means we are using 80 20 80 percent of the data will be for training and then 20 percent will be for tests so let's run it that is also done for us so let me make it a bit smaller yes so let's add another code here so what we are going to do next is we are going to now perform um, the training and then tests of the models that means we are going to create our classifier and then train it and then test but please know that in machine learning workflows and um, i'm just touching just a few of them here because the focus is to let you know how to run the random forest classifier but in typical machine learning tax there are other things you also have to do um, in the work so take note of that so now we have our data split for us into training and test sets so the training subsets is to help the model to learn and identify patterns that can be used to make future predictions so before we move on let's even check the shape the sample size for the various um, subsets so let's create a new code here and see xstream.shape let's run it and then y train let's see i'm just doing with one example you can do it for the test set as well dot shape yes so that's also done for us so we have everything we need there so it's now time to build a classifier we also use scikit-learn to do this so let's do it here so we see clf equals random forest classifier and we use the default parameters we had already imported them here so that's why we are just calling it straight away then we feed it with a training 
set so we see clf dot fit x train y train then we run x so the model has now been trained so if it's successful you have the green tick here and this also shows you the parameters that this model has so we are using the default parameters for this now it's time to test or evaluate the model so to do that we need to first let the model make its own predictions so we are going to give predictions here we say y pred equals cl of that predicts and we issue it with what the x test data so predictions has been made you can even check some of the predictions there as well so let's see y pred let's look at the first five These are the predictions. Let's even look at the original values, which was what y test zero five. These are the original values here. So with this one, we had the model predicting correctly these classes. So it's time to do the evaluation, and we are going to use the accuracy score. Please know that. When you are doing model evaluation, there are a number of factors you need to consider, but these things I will discuss in later tutorials. So let's do the evaluation. We are evaluating the model using the accuracy score. So we see accuracy score equals We already imported this one, so let's use a different name. Let's say accuracy equals accuracy score. And we feed it with the y true. That's the actual value, the true values. And that's what the y test. And then we now feed it with the predicted ones, which is y pred. We are going to leave all other settings to the default one. So let's run it. Now we can print the accuracy score. So let's say print accuracy. Let's use this. It's supposed to be this way. Yeah, because it's a variable name. Okay, so accuracy was 0 0.88. So that is what the model did. But so here the model gave some good predictions and we had quite a high accuracy score. So that's how we do it. So this is how we implement the random forest classifier in Python using the scikit-learn library. So I believe you've been able to learn much with it but with the machine learning tax there are a lot of things you do here we are using an artificial data set that we generated but if you are using real world data there are a number of things you also have to do and then consider when doing this so once you have all these things done then you can now call the random forest classifier and then use it to do your classification task i'll be covering more tutorials on tips on machine learning so please stay tuned for them thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next session. Goodbye.